welcome to the Ruth Loves to Knit podcast. I'm Ruth and I love to knit. It's January the 19th, um, 2022, and I'm coming to you as usual from Devon in the southwest of England, where I live with my husband Nigel and my two children, Samuel, who's 12, and Evis, who's 13. And as usual, um, in the winter in England, <laughs> it's very dull and I have a black pull illuminations amount of light on and as usual it's shining off my grey hair but we'll make the most of it <laughs> and um, hopefully we'll have a good time together this morning. If it's the first time um, you're here you're so so welcome and um, if you've been here before you know what to expect and I do apologise right from the start if I keep looking up different directions because my camera keeps um, stopping. So this is um, hopefully going to go this time and um, there won't be any more interruptions. Uh, what else do I have to tell you? Where you can find me? I'm Ruth Loves to Knit Podcast on Instagram. I'm um, Ruth, no I'm not, I'm Crafty Mad Midwife on Ravelry and I have an email which I'm most welcome to use which is ruthlovestoknit at gmail.com and you can get in touch with me either on Instagram or on um, the email and it's great to hear from you no matter what the subject is. So um, I, it's only been two weeks since I was last with you but I have quite a bit to share. Um, so I was going to leave it to next week but I thought oh I'll be snowed under by then and due to um, quite a lot of uh, online training sessions and uh, online meetings. I have got a lot of knitting done. I don't know what I'm going to do if we have to go back to in-person meetings, when we have to go back to in-person meetings, because I have to admit below the screen, I'm knitting away. I listen, I take it in. Obviously, I make notes from time to time, but I quite often knit. True confessions. <laughs> so, um, what do we have to talk about? Well, first of all, I want to thank you so much for all the lovely comments you always put under my videos. Um, thank you so much for the encouragement and the support you you give me. As I always say, I don't take it for granted. There are so many podcasts out there now that are so much more professional and better than mine, but I appreciate that you spend a little time with me every time I uh, podcast. So thank you very much. The other thing is, uh, last time I announced the winners of two giveaways. One was for the 2K giveaway for 2,000 subscriptions and the other one was for my podiversary because this month is um, my one year podiversary. Um, and one has been claimed and one hasn't. So if you, I was going to pull a new winner but I thought well there's a lot going on in people's lives then maybe their first priority isn't to watch my podcast so I'll give it till my next podcast um, and if you go back and um, look at the last um, podcast and um, see if your name was mentioned it's right at the start you don't have to watch the whole thing um, but if it isn't and you don't claim that doesn't make sense if, <laughs> if the person who was announced the last time hang on let's make it easier let me just get the name. <laughs> Wouldn't that be easier? Oh, so well organised. Let me see. It was uh, MZ Mary and she's from the USA in Florida, if that makes it any handier for you. But if you know her, him, her, <laughs> um, give her a wee shove to, to get in contact with me. But as I say, if um, that person doesn't uh, claim the prize, I will redraw. So, um. Yeah, and just to show you, remind you of, it's not, it's a lovely prize. Don't know why anybody wouldn't want to let me know that they want it. Um, and remember, it's just the wee bag from Craig Creations. There will be wee gnomes on it, so it's a bit crinkled because it's been folded up. Then a absolutely stunning skein of yarn from West Greenloft Yarns with this lovely pink. And um, it's got silk in it. That's lovely to the lovely he is there and then a wee set of stitch markers from my lovely friend of course they won't sit um Jeanette oh they're upside down never mind Jeanette of Crafty Clegg's Creations so that's the prize and it could be winging its way to the USA um but the person hasn't contacted me yet so I'll keep that till the next podcast and as I say if I yeah if I haven't heard from them by then I will redraw so that's the admin. Um, 
yes that's everything <laughs> three other today um so first of all what am i wearing i am wearing i have to think about this because i knit it a long time ago i am wearing the ooh la la can't help but i'm sure that's not it's by isabel kramer i'm sure that's not how she says it but um it's the ooh la la top and i test knit this for isabel and i've done short sleeves uh but you could obviously do long sleeves it's a see oh, you can see there it's a mesh lovely lace hang on i feel very far away from the camera today excuse me it's a lovely uh lace very simple although it looks very difficult um see that there um and I as I say it's on the back no it's not on the back it's plain on the back um and I did this for a test knit for Isabel um I want to say last year sometime and it's knit in whole scarn super soft um and Robin's egg colorway oh dear me that was going right back into my memory <laughs> and obviously you need to wear something under it because it's it's got the you can see it's got the, the lace so um but it's lovely and light if you work with um whole scar you know it's like it's not super soft in any shape or form i don't know if that's a translation thing because it is a danish brand but it definitely um isn't super soft you feel like it's you're knitting with lace but then suddenly when you plop it in the water and um, block it it just blooms up and I used to hear people saying that but it does it really does all the wee spaces fill up and it's beautiful to wear and it's as light as a feather but just um, perfect um, over a top or I suppose you could wear it in the right through every season and that's what I'm wearing the ooh la la top and if you haven't done any lace work before and you think this is nice this would be a really good one to go for Isabel's as uh, if you've been here for any length of time at all, you know I love Isabel's um, designs. Um, she's definitely my favourite designer and um, she writes things so, so simply and so well. And this might be a nice one, a nice one to try. And obviously the whole scarn is um, a very affordable, um, even with postage from Denmark, it's still a very affordable uh, yarn. And there's there's shops in the UK, there's um, Hank's Yarn Parlour in Belfast and um tribe yarns in london i know does does um whole scarn so there you go i'm sure there's others too you could tell me about so that's what i'm wearing i've worn it a lot and actually it hasn't pilled or anything so um it's it's a really good yarn i would recommend i've knit quite a few things in holes but it does take a wee bit of getting used to it i will be honest but um yeah it's it's a it's a good yarn so there's a lot of chat about what i'm wearing the other thing um, I was asked um, was uh, several people in in um, oh um, 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 today several people in Instagram on Instagram asked me if you've watched this podcast for any length of time at all you know I do a lot of test knits and of course this was a test knit and I do a lot of sample knitting and what's the difference? Well, test knits tend to be, well, you apply for test knits unless you're somebody really special and you get asked, but I'm not that special person. And you apply for test knits often on Instagram. There's another um, website called Yarn Pond. If you ever want to knit, a, do a t try a test knit, just log on to Yarn Pond. I'll do it. I'll put the details down below. Um, dot com, I think it is. And that lets you know all the test knits that are up and um, you can apply from them, for them there. Um, they do like to see maybe your get your Ravelry name so they can see what you've knit before but you don't have to be um, a professional knitter you don't have to be you can be a beginner so everybody has to start somewhere and some of the designers actually say that they're quite glad to have sort of um, beginner knitters because if you've knit for somebody for a long time you start to be able to read their patterns and don't see the mistakes anymore and so sometimes a fresh set of eyes coming in is, is what the designers want and the benefits are you get first dibs at the pattern and you get a free pattern at the end of the day because they'll send you the fully edited um, pattern and um, you do have to be willing to have to find mistakes um because that's why you test it that's why they get them to test it um you have to use your own yarn unless you're supported which i've never been i just use my own yarn um, you get to keep it obviously and um and often uh sorry i've got notes down here i'm looking at um 
often the designer will then give you another one of their patterns out of their repertoire free to repay you for um, knitting for them. Uh, but the downside, I suppose, is there's a deadline and sometimes, and Isabel's very good, sometimes if it's the bigger sizes like mine would be, she would just want a yoke done and a sleeve or just to she know, so she, just show, so she knows that the pattern works. But I mean, obviously the smaller sizes, they just whiz off the needles um, and she's very, very good and that she does it on Ravelry. There's a Ravelry group so you can talk to other people um, and interact and you can ask is this just me? Have I counted this wrong? Or is this really wrong? And then you can see the corrections on there and then work from that. So that's a test knit. You can, if anybody knows anything else, you can put it down in the comments, but that's my experience. And then sample knits tend to be for yarn shops, indie dyers, um, yarn companies who want to show off their beautiful yarn. And maybe at yarn shows. Um, so, you know, if you go to a yarn show, you often see um, reels with jumpers hanging on them and or socks and they'll often be knit by sample knitters because most people who own yarn companies do not have the time to knit up all of their beautiful yarn and that's what I do a lot. Um, I've knit socks, um, I'm knitting a shawl which you'll see in a minute um, and uh, you they send you the yarn, you knit it, you send it back and then they generally give you the equivalent of credit for their shop so you can spend um, in their shop so if you use three skeins of DK they'll give you the equivalent um, credit note for those three skeins of DK yarn whatever is that clear as mud just look to see if um yeah I, I've never been paid in money they it's always been like for like um, and obviously they choose the pattern for you as well. Obviously, if you think you're not capable of doing it, you know, do say. But, um, and there's a bit of, I've always had a, no, there's been a few who've said, can you do this pattern? But um, there's a few who've said, look, choose between two or three patterns. So that's the difference in um, test knitting and sample knitting. I would encourage anybody to test knit. If you don't cope with deadlines, it's maybe not for you, although some deadlines are great. The the big Jimmy Jab sweater that I showed on the last podcast had a really long, I mean, three months I think she gave. Um, and her pattern, she just announced that big Jimmy Jab, you know, with the lovely um slip stitches on the on the um I was well, I did think to bring it in. Never mind. It was on it's on the um last podcast and um, it's out on the 3rd of February. A lot of people have asked me about that. Um, yeah, 3rd of February, that big Jimmy Jab will be coming out and you can look back at my Instagram and, and previous podcast to see that. Um, hope that helps. That was a, quite a few people asked me that just randomly in my last, over after my last podcast. Um, yes, yeah, so as I was saying, <laughs> the, um, I've had quite a few meetings and things on, on, um, Microsoft Teams and on Zoom. So I have got a lot of knitting done and some of it I have here and one thing I don't. So we'll start with something that was languishing from, I cast these on in um, August last year. And then if you've been here for a while, you know, I totally lost my sock mojo, uh, which wasn't like me because I've always got a pair of socks in the go. And um, yeah, it was it just, I don't know where it flew off. <laughs> to warmer climbs and but thankfully it has come back I'm not really sure why it's come back but it just has come back so I these are the Kelpie socks by this handmade life lovely mock cable down the side and um it's done so that one's down one side and one's down you see um so left and right and if this is done in the beautiful absolutely gorgeous yarn and it is Castleview yarns in the colorway Fear of the Dark and they are just gorgeous um I didn't I don't know why I thought <laughs> they are gorgeous and they're really very um that mock cable so easy to to do but why I thought I wanted to do this kind of rib through a whole sock is, I'm not sure. <laughs> but anyway, they're done. They're lovely, comfortable. The yarn's lovely, so soft. And um, I'm just thrilled that those have been finished. Show you one more time. And that's by, what did I say? 
Um, this Hat Made Life, Olivia Villarreal. So that's my first um, FO. Let's pop those out of the way. That was a long language whip. Oh, my tongue is stuck to the top of my mouth today. I've even had coffee and I'm still a little bit. Um, my second um, finished object was also a whip for a while. And if you've been here for a while again, let's pop that over there. Oh, um, you'll know that I was knitting the pressed flower shawl by um, Savory Knitting. And just get the pattern here. And that's the pressed flower shawl. And I struggled to get going with this. I I don't know why. Well, a lot of people struggle to get going with it. The first bit, the setup rows are written and then it goes into a chart, but it's not all charted. I don't know. I said last time I just took a mental block. I I joke with my daughter that, you know, if she decides she can't do something, she can't do it mentally, you know, and I cajole her and encourage her and help her. And I just did the same thing. I decided I couldn't do it. <laughs> and um, my lovely friend Sarah from my local um, knitting shop, the Woolly Beater, um, just talked me through it. And I used to joke that I have to verbalise to visualise. And once we talked through it, it was TV knitting. It was so simple. I don't know why I thought it was difficult and it has developed into the most gorgeous shawl and I absolutely love it. And it came off the needles because it's DK and slip stitches. It came off the needles so fast. And this is my press flower shawl. It's always hard to show a big shawl, isn't it? And I absolutely love it. <clears throat> and I would wear this. Um... Oh, as I choked to death. Like that. I mean, oh, it's so squishy. I love it. Absolutely love it. And um, it was knit in. So I'll show you the label first. It was in Witchcrafty Lady DK Weight. It's in Poldale. She's on Etsy. And the um the bluey teal, actually that is a really <laughs> got in my mouth. That's a really good representation of the colour. This is lime and this um is teal. Very simple. Well, I love I mean it got to the point I didn't even need to look at the chart. It was so intuitive and you can just see which slip stitches. These are all slip stitches and knit stitches and you could just see what way it needed to go. It just became a habit, really. But it was a sewn bind off. Now, I have never done a sewn bind off. My goodness. If you ever wish you hadn't started something, ne nearly 500 stitches of a sewn bind off. So basically, that's a thousand stitches, isn't it? Because you go in and out and right. So it took me forever. Yeah, that's it. But it's such a lovely finish. It is a really lovely finish. And lovely and stretchy because I thought of doing an eye cord finish and um, but it wouldn't have given the stretch you needed because it is so lovely and stretchy so I would recommend anybody do it if you have trouble starting because <laughs> like 700 people have done it on Ravelry projects so why was I struggling um, but it just is um, not that clearly written initially until the penny drops and the light goes on and there it is so that's the press flower shawl and I just already have worn it a few times it's been folded up it's a bit creased but um I just love it I'd be very tempted to do another one in different colors obviously but um and I can't say enough about um this yarn witchcrafty lady so plump and, and in fact it would nearly I would say do as a worsted a, a light worsted but I can't say enough about it and it's just it's lovely to knit with and it's lovely to wear. So that's my second finished object, the press flower shawl. I've got wool in my mouth. The press flower shawl by Savory Knitting. I'll show you one more time. And um, like anything, charts, trying to use charts more. If there's a written and a charted pattern, I used to always just go to the written, but I'm really trying to use charts more because it opens up so many more patterns, um, but I nearly always have to blow them up. <laughs> <laughs> and I use a um a line ruler 
because um, my eyes just go like that <laughs> and I'm knitting on the wrong um, line and all the rest of it. So I would encourage you to, if you haven't done, um, if you don't use charts, do try. They're not as scary. And actually that chart was the same one end as the other. So you could, even if you, you know, went to the wrong end, it really didn't matter. So that's the press flower shawl. Then my third FO, yes, it's finished. I'm sure you've maybe seen the pictures on Instagram, but my fairy ring is finished. But I sent it off to the person I knit it for. And um, so I did a little video last week um, on it to explain the whole thing. So I'm going to pop that in if I can now. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. Hi, so I wanted to do this extra wee video just to talk about a finished object. You've seen this, if you've watched my podcast, you've seen this um, object through the weeks that I have struggled and knit away on this. And um, this is the Fairy Ring Cardigan by uh, Katie Green. All the toadstools. <laughs> Um, and um, this was a real labour of love for me. This is not for me, it's for a lovely friend of mine. And um, I think there's an added pressure whenever you're knitting for somebody else to get it right. And it's a surprise. So I was very much taking um, the sizing and things from uh, previous things that she had knit. Um, so I'm really hoping it's not too big. I'm really scared it might be too big. But anyway, she can wear it around the house or whatever. But um, I um really found this a difficult knit. Um, the the designer said in a live thing that she did that it wasn't for the faint-hearted, and I think it got into my head. I think it messed with my head, and even things that normally I would have knit maybe, you know, loads of times before, I struggled with, and um, I think it was psychological. I really do, and I just want to talk a wee bit about it because it really was quite the mammoth project. Um, well, I suppose I should talk about the yarn first. Um. I used nearly all stash, which was I was really chuffed with. I um, and I overestimated how much of the main color I would need. Um, and my lovely friend Hannah happened to have some. Um, but I'll talk about that later. So we'll put it up here so you can see it. So the the brown, lovely um, lovely brown is um, is it, yes, that's the right one. Is from Woolly Knit. And I had this in my stash and it's um, their British Nat Naturals Pure Wool DK and um, you get 10 balls of 50 gram um, in a pack. And I think um, it doesn't they never put on how much is in a 50 gram ball on their um, information. Oh, they do this time. 102 meters. So um, when I was when I looked at the um, pattern, so I'm all. And um, when I looked at the pattern, um, it said I reckoned I would need about 14 balls. So hence I borrowed some off Hannah. Um, but actually, in hindsight, I probably could have got away with the 10. And um, I knit a size, the, the fourth size. Um, so she she gave me some extra balls, but they were a different dye lot. So just to be careful, although it's probably dyed completely the same, just to be careful, I used the different dye lot on the sleeves so that if it did have a slight shade change, it wouldn't be noticeable. But actually, I have three balls left of my original pack, so I could have just knit it in the, 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 the yarn I have, but hey-ho. And then the um, green for the grass is in Rowan Moordale. I have a sweaters quantity of this wool I got from a closing down sale, 40% off closing down sale. So I just used a wee scrap of that, still plenty left. And it is um, British wool and British alpaca. Um, where's the tag? I think there's nothing else to say about that. Yep. And then um, the red, no, the, the gray, sorry, is um, Cascades Heathers, which is one I had a moustache. Uh, colour number 9491, you know that, my favourite colour, and it's a DK, the whole cardigan's done in DK, sure, I should have said that. And then the red was also, I don't have the ticket for that, the red was also um, a Cascades, and if you've watched the podcast, you know that I 
um, thought it was a, a DK, but it actually was a four ply, so I ended up holding that double. And at some points, um, it was a four stranded colour work. I'm not showing you my floats because that was new to me. <laughs> and what you don't see won't bother you or worry. <laughs> uh, you can see some of them there. Not they're not that they're not that horrendous. You can see some of them. Um, so this bit, as you can imagine, was a challenge. I learned so much um, how to cross the yarn over so it wouldn't show through and um, what way to cross over and all the rest of it. But as will become plain later on, I didn't learn everything I should have learned. So, um, but I think it looks okay. I did have to do the, a wee duplicate stitch um, to cover up one or two wee um, red stitches were showing through the grey, but I think it's come out okay. So that's the yarns. I think that covered all of them. Yes. And then, so just have a wee few wee notes. So um, if you remember, I showed you the lovely, um, this is the how the pattern comes. You can get it on a digital form too, but this was actually cheaper to get it this way than the digital form. And it's the fairy ring um, cardigan. So that's how it came. And it was, it was well clear, you know, um, and the but the thing I liked about it was the um, color work charts were very clear. I mean that the size of this, whereas often you can get color work charts and they're you have to blow them up nearly. Um, they're so tiny. Then so I'll say the good things first. <laughs> it's a gift, and the person will be chuffed with it. That's the good thing. I learned an awful lot. Um, really enough, quite a few techniques I'd never done before, despite being quite an ex you know experienced knitter. And um, yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> we'll leave it at that. But what was I thinking? This is dark yarn, <laughs> very dark yarn. Knitting it is fine, but this is a steaked cardigan. So you knit round and round and round and round, which was fantastic because that was just no thought process. Once you got through this color work, it was no thought process. But as I said, it's a steaked cardigan. Well, could I see where to do the steak because it was dark yarn. Oh, I was, so it was my first proper steak for a start. Um, if you don't know what a steak is, it's when you cut cut your yarn. Um, I did the crocheted um, reinforcement. It's so long since I've crocheted, I could hardly even remember how to hold the crochet hook. So that took me a while, but I got there in the end. Um, and in hindsight, I would have done, um, when I tell you what happened, <laughs> I would have done a, um, sewn reinforcement i don't have a sewing machine at the minute um so next time i have another steaked cardigan on stickable cardigan on the needles and i definitely will use the sewing machine to reinforce that um as i said it was three stroke four stranded colored work so that was new to me i am not a pro i've done maybe oh three four color work projects and um this was by far the most advanced one um let me see french knots i did them when i was um doing cross stitch many moons ago not sure they're professional but sure it's a very rustic looking cardigan and um it does add to them definitely does add the wee extra bit um then uh da, 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 da. as i say knitting it for someone else there's always that wee bit of extra stress you're worried that you know it won't be the right thing you're more sort of conscious of maybe ends not tucked in all the rest of it i have to say i don't think i've knit a project in a long time that i fudged so many things i got so many things wrong i had to go back um and i think it was because she got into my head i honestly do um what else so the dark yarn oh um so the steak and i will put a wee um video in now excuse the mess of my hair in this video i don't know why it's like <laughs> um i'm not putting in i'm going to show you the steak up to the color work and i'm not putting the color work in because it wasn't a disaster darling but it didn't work the way it should have and i don't know why it did fray a bit at the sides but the great thing is because this is woolly wool and again, that's why I would sew it next time because you can sew up and down, up and down as many times as you want. But because this is woolly wool, it didn't go anywhere. So I was able to just catch the wee ends that frayed and sort that out. And then just undo this wee button. Then it's all because you put the button band onto that stick, it naturally curls in under itself. And then you can hide all your multitude of sins with this lovely... Um, ribbon but 
So that's all good. So it's not going anywhere. And then because you put a button band on, it's secured again because obviously the stitches will go down the way and not across the way. Um, so that's the first time I've done that proper steak. The first time I've done a crocheted reinforcement. Um, the first time I've picked up a button band off a steak. Um, and the first time I've sewn on ribbon to a stretchy material and I didn't do a good job, look. But the person it's going to is a sewist and I'm hoping that she can reinforce that. I was, I looked, I, I think I looked at, did more preparation for this than I did for my babies. <laughs> I watched videos, YouTube videos, blogs, all the rest of it. And this apparently, this stitch, which is not good, is called the fell stitch. I don't know if you can see it just going over there, see? And um, it's used so there's a bit of give, but I'm not happy with it. But it's it's on anyway, and that's the that's the ribbon that came from the Kitty Green um, website, our Etsy shop. And so... It's happy enough, but I'm going to put a wee note in and say, please secure that yourself Um, if you're not happy with it. But it's secured, but it's just moving a wee bit. And maybe just, it's the first time I've done it and it just maybe isn't as tight as it could be. Is that everything? Saying I've talked for 10 minutes on this. Um. So yes, the steak of the main body was a dream. It cut like butter. It was fantastic. I would definitely do it again. But the colour work, I need to work out what I did wrong, why it why and as I was cutting it you could just see it going so um and my husband was doing the video behind me and he actually said I it's gonna break it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna go so um yes I'll not show that the other thing I wanted to show was these gorgeous wee buttons and these buttons I bought them actually not not knowing I was going to do this project from a gorgeous wee company I have some left And it's a fantastic wee company um, and it says Art Yarns Buttons and it's from the Moray Reach Out and that's up in um, Aberdeenshire. And it's an organisation that helps um, adults with special um, needs. And so it's, I'll just read, Moray Reach Out is a charity providing work for vulnerable adults. Individual buttons are hand sewn, hand sewn from gathered sticks, holes are drilled, buttons hand sanded before being finished with natural oil to produce a unique bespoke button. The purchase of a small button makes a huge difference in allowing others to achieve. And they do it, they spin, it's in Bucky up up above Peterhead where we used to live, that's how I knew about it. Um, they do spinning, they make woodwork stuff, it's a lovely, lovely uh, place. They're on Instagram um, and I'll put the details of them in the um, box down, the description box down below. But those wee buttons I just thought were perfect for um, such a rustic cardigan. Um, and they were sitting in my stash because I'd bought other buttons from them and I, I wanted to make up the, the postage. And um, I just thought couldn't couldn't have fitted better, really. So that's my um, <laughs> labour of love done, off the needles, sorted. And I'm going to post it off today to the recipient and hopefully... She loves it. <laughs> I am worried it's too big, but hopefully she could just wear it as a big baggy cardigan then and she'll know it's the thought that counts. The back, I haven't shown you the back. There's the back as well. She'll know it's the thought that counts and um, that I was definitely thinking of her and praying for her while I was doing this. And then it's just the long sleeves. Now I have turned them up, but um, just the long sleeves. And yeah, so done 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 and so am i done and i don't think i'll be doing um color work or a steak now for a wee while my other steak cardigan is going to sit for a wee minute or two till i work out what i did wrong on the color work portion um and i acquire somebody who can run a sew machine up um up the steak so that's my fairy ring cardigan all right back to normal programming bye video if you didn't it was going to be a disaster um i pop a picture here of um Jeanette wearing it i knit it for Jeanette of crafty clegg's creations if you don't follow her 
um, on Instagram and on uh, YouTube, here on YouTube, you must. She is toadstool potty, <laughs> is the right way I would put it. She's obsessed with toadstools. And when I saw that cardigan, I messaged her and said, look at this cardigan. And she said, oh, I think that's beyond my skill level. Well, as you've seen my video, I think it maybe was beyond my skill level, but I did it anyway and she's thrilled with it and it does fit her i think maybe i could have gone down a size but she seems happy enough and um i just pinned a wee bit of ribbon to the um cardigan in case she wanted to fix anything and a wee button for extra button as well but um just talking about the steak that was done um there i did um obviously swatched for that and um oh the other thing i forgot to say in the video was i didn't do the lace stitch which the lace stitch is i can't remember if it goes up or down Either goes that way or that way. I can not go that way, wouldn't it? And I decided not to do it because it would mean it was a double thickness cardigan. And ladies of a certain age, um, I don't always need a double thickness cardigan. But I decided to practice my steak and I did it on my um, swatch. And it worked beautifully. My crocheted worked beautifully. Well, maybe I should have done it on this swatch. <laughs> and I would have been more aware of what, what to do and what to go wrong. Um, if anybody can give me any advice on what I did wrong, it was rectified, it's fine, it's beautiful, no problem. But if you could tell me, did I cross over the the um, floats the wrong way or what happened? Why did it kind of come apart or should I just have sewn it and be done? Um, what else? Um, the little buttons um, I showed as well um, from uh, Moray crafts are um just wanted to say on instagram there's a link there obviously you can go to a website i'll put it all down below but the link um on um instagram is um m o m r o then art yarn so and they sell um hand spun yarn they sell buttons if you're in the local area they sell lovely whether they're selling wooden christmas trees and it's just such a lovely grip of of um, people working up there and they're so um, helpful I mean they sent me those buttons same day and um, I can't I, they just were perfect for um, that cardigan um, so that's the very ring cardigan done I learned so many things um, just so many new techniques but now my problem is do I get back on the horse and do more sticking colour work or do I just walk gently for a while and stick with my uh, safe <laughs> comfort zone shawls and different things like that um but you know I had a hankering to do something from Marie Wallen <laughs> think of delusions of grandeur that I maybe maybe I should hold off um I was saying to somebody it's a bit like childbirth that you know afterwards it's not great at the time but afterwards you forget and you go back for another one sorry if any men are watching this um and so I think I'm holding off in the Marie Wallen for a wee while yet I think I'll do a wee bit more thinking about that um maybe just a color work jumper because I definitely do want to improve my color work and um tension and everything um the other thing is I'm not very good at putting colors together so um I really do need to think about that but I still have the Norbakken I showed last week, which has colour work and needs staked. So I think I will keep, I was going to put that over, as I said in the video, and just forget about it for a while. But I think I'd need to gently get back on the horse. I'll maybe not go a full gallop. I'll just get gently back on um, and see what happens. So that was a long, long, long winded um, thing about the fairy ring cardigan. It's done. Um, and Jeanette loves it. That's the main thing. I don't have a problem giving my knits away. I love the process of knitting. I've always loved the process of knitting and I love to knit for others. And some people on my Instagram did say, oh, how could you give that away? But it wasn't knit for me. It was, it was always going to be for Jeanette. And the reason I didn't tell her was in case it all went wrong and I could just ignore it and as if it never happened. Um, so that was, that was that. So there you go. That's it all finished. That's my FOs. How many minutes in? I don't know. Um, oh, and I was able to put that cardigan into two um, cals. One was the Stick Along 2022 FO uh, thread on Instagram. And I'm not going to get this right. I'm sorry. But it's by Annie, Annie Duty Knits. I'll put it in the down bar. Uh, she's Finnish, I think. Um, she's got a lovely podcast. And um, 
I will always watch it and uh, so I've entered it into that and then lovely Rebecca from the Crea Bear podcast um, has done one called Knitting Firsts Cal and it's got a chatter and it's got a FO and um, so I was able to put my stick in because I'd never really done anything like that before there was lots of things in that I'd never done before so I was able to enter two cals who knows you never know if you're not in you can't win so right everybody okay have you got a cup of tea coffee whatever um your preference to drink is um and take a breath <laughs> we'll go on to whips now because I finished those socks um I don't I've only got two languishing whips one I still am on the fence about whether you saw it last week the shawl with the mohair I really think I might rip that back and reuse that mohair before I don't want to knit a whole load of no hair and then have to rip that back it would be a nightmare so um yeah I'm still on the fence about that it's hidden away just for the minute the Norback and cardigan will be brought out this week but um I was asked by I was actually asked by um lovely Shannon of Blue Fern Yarns I did mention it last time if I would knit a shop sample for it. and this the day I think the day of my last podcast afterwards the doorbell rang and the postman came and I was knitting um she asked me to knit this gorgeous um shawl no problem give me a shawl any day <laughs> by Truly Myrtle it's called the sorry I've been knitting it all week and I can't remember what it's called Juniper so it's the Juniper shawl and it's a three colour fade or I suppose you could do it in one colour if you want but Shannon's asked me to do a three colour fade in her beautiful yarn and um, I'll maybe show you the yarn first sorry crinkle crinkle I've finished the first colour it's in oh I can't get the bag open that's helpful for a podcast um it's in a uh, garter so it's really really fast so she's asked me to do and she told me the um way she want you know the colours that she wanted me to do so this is the first colour. Oh, light, lighting, lighting, lighting. And it is salmon. Is it not right? No, it's still. And so that's all. It's, uh, I, I've got 38 grams of that left. Then the next colour is shore. Um, it's got speckle, it's got a couple of wee dark speckles in it. You'll see it a bit. Lovely peachy, creamy kind of. Oh, that's not. Ignore me. Just ignore. I'm sure Shannon's going. No, that's not the color. Sorry, the other one's attached to the. The second one is. I guess you had to rip back. Because <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. The second one is um seashell. See the lovely peachy, so it goes. Sorry about this lighting. So there's a bit of this in this. So that's the second colour. And then the third colour is Shore. Which is coming up, it's peachy cream. Salmon-y cream, I suppose. And um, as always, lovely to knit with. It says 75-25, uh, four ply, or finger and weight. And this is what I've done so far. So as I say, I've finished the first, the first colour. Let me get the right way. So you can see it's just very subtle. And it's very quick because um, it's garter. It's so squishy. It's absolutely lovely. Hopefully you can see the, the chevrons the way that, I don't know what to do to me. Ah, that may be better. See the chevrons to make it the way, you can't really see it with the, just, held up like that but this is what I'm doing sorry it's lighting yeah so I would say that'll be finished for next time because it's such a quick knit and you can do it in front of the television I always say do it in front of the television I hardly ever watch tv <laughs> I podcast I watch podcasts um I watch Netflix um mostly don't well no actually we don't have Netflix now Disney Channel for the kids and I discovered the Disney Channel tangent has National Geographic and I love I love a good documentary a good uh, crime documentary a good um, anything documentary so um, I don't tend to watch normal TV anymore 
um, and I don't try not to listen to the news either. <laughs> so that's the Juniper Shawl by Truly Myrtle. I've never knit one of her patterns before and it's really, really well, well written. Again, if you haven't done a lace pattern before, this might be the one to go for because it is written out. So you don't have to worry about charts. And um, yep, so hopefully you'll see an FO next time. Um, I'm sure Shannon will let me hold on to it till I, take, till I show it in the next podcast. <laughs> Or I'll take photographs. And that's in my very well used, quite old now, hohe bag. It was yellow. <laughs> but it's really not showing up yellow anymore. It's well weathered. So that's that's my first FO. And that was only talked about last week. That wasn't started. Then, as I say, um, another one I showed you last week was um, the pair of socks that I was knitting. I, then I didn't like the yarn I was using and I changed my, um, I said I was going to start again but I showed you a little sample um, and it's these socks which was a free pattern as far as I know with West Yorkshire Spinners Christmas um, um, socks not socks oh my goodness yarn and it's the uh, Twinkle Toes and the, I think this this pattern was given out to the yarn shops because my my yarn shop owner just gave me it, and it is the twisted rib if I think if I remember right twisted rib knitted socks and I showed you last week the pattern maybe you can see a bit of the pattern on it this time I would never have knit these socks and I said that last time and I got a lot of comments to say that people had got this pattern thought I mean maybe got it with the ball of wool they bought for Christmas and said and said they weren't going to knit it. And then I showed you the pattern and you were like, what? So I'd said I was going to cast it on with a Reggie Yak wool, but actually once I started, it didn't look right. And so I went back into my stash and I found um, another gorgeous, I've had it for a long time and it's, um, I've sort of keeping it because I didn't have a lot of solids and I was keeping it in case I needed to add it to something. But why do you keep yarn? Use it. Don't keep it for, for good. No point. And it's from my yarn place i think she's on etsy I'll, I'll put the details down and it's pebble and it's superwash merino nylon 8515 um and it is just a gray but it's just lovely tonal oh, that's good why do some colors come up well and some don't um that's perfect and i've just done a wee bit to show you and again you never ever in a million years Would have thought that was the same pattern so i've started back on those i wasn't going to i was going to start another pair but the other pair's pattern isn't being released officially because i remember that was a sock uh, shop sample i did for botanical yarns isn't going to be released um till 21st so i thought i can't show you again so i thought i'll just start these and i think they're coming up beautifully sorry talk with my hand in front of my mouth so um, they are a bit tricky to start off with and again it's maybe just me I am a slow learner as I've told you before about things um, but two people messaged me to say that they struggled with the first cast on our first um, row after cast on and I was able to help them out with that so that was good and of course I'm storing this in and um, I do all my socks on nine inch circulars um, and I store this in my favouritest favorite bag from my lovely friend Hannah, I have to mention her at least once every podcast and she made that for me and she knows me so well. <laughs> so that's that. And then um, I have my, um, I lied. Excuse me. <laughs> this is my other whip which I want to get into again today, this week. It hasn't changed from last week, but I just want to show you, um, which I will be definitely knitting on again, now that I've got the other things out of the way. And it is the a girl's best friend from Isabella Kramer. And I'm doing it in West Yorkshire. Uh, West Yorkshire. West Greenloft yarn. Sorry, Vicky. And it's three colours. I'll show you the picture. Three colours with beautiful detail just enough to keep you I won't be doing there's tass uh, there's pom-poms I'm not a um, tassel pom-pom type of girl as you maybe would be aware if you've watched this before and the three yarns I'm using are oh 
as bad as my handbag, everything goes to the bottom of the bag. Where's it gone? Yep. So the three yarns, so the one on the needles at the moment is um, Lulu. That's, per that's perfect. Lulu. Say so waist screen and they're all um, merino nylon. Actually, just on this subject, my ball winder has died to death. So hence the messy balls. Anybody has any, I had the wee one, you know, that everybody had the wee plastic one with the red bottom for years and it just gave up the ghosts. And then I got another one and it's so noisy that I can't bear it. Um, so if anybody has any recommendations, I may have a birthday, a big birthday coming up this year and I think I might request it if you can give me a recommendation for a good ball winder um, that makes good cakes. Then the next one is colour two, sorry getting all off on a tangent, is pecan. It's gorgeous, maybe a wee bit darker than that. Yeah. And then the last one is kindred spirits. All from West Green Loft yarns. I love Vicky's yarns. And um, so that'll be getting into that again this week. And in my So Yarnalicious bag. So, last thing <laughs> is I just have a hoe. And it's my handbag knitting, my knitting club knitting, my um, take out and about waiting in the car knitting. It's always in my handbag. Um, and what do you take to knit club? Do you take a big project? And I was at Knit Club a few weeks ago and we were actually meeting in a coffee shop and um, the one of my friends, hi Caroline, um, ha was knitting brioche. <laughs> it's like I can barely, when I'm chatting, I can just about manage round and round and she was knitting brioche. My hat comes off to her and it's just a very simple leftovers sock um, with my usual, well, I'll say usual now, um, shadow wrap heel, which I really love. So that's just... And it's in another wee so yarn delicious bag and the show yarn delicious bags are made in canvas so it's perfect to throw in a bag that's being used a lot so they don't get wrecked they don't get um, destroyed and it just sits like that and goes in my handbag so that those that are my whips those are my whips and um, that i'm i'm working on i am not a monogamous knitter now saying that i will knit that um juniper shawl till it's done because it's you know it's needs to be done and needs to be sorted so I will I will knit on that but um I always love to have one of one of everything at least a jumper a shawl socks on the go um so I can pick and choose from um what I want to go with the mood whereas I know a lot of you are monogamous mon monogamous and I take my hat off to you for that as well but I'm just not uh so I think that's I have applied for uh, two more test knits well one test knit which I don't think I'll get and there's another test knit that came out this morning which is just gorgeous and I know that Fernanda it will maybe want to of um of little monkeys and me would be right up her street and um I might apply for it too but we'll see that's all to be confirmed another one I think it'd be very very well um lots of people will want to do it so I don't think I'll get on to it and then lovely Brogan from the Woolly Witchcraft Yes, Woolly Witchcraft, um, I always get her mixed up with Witchcrafty Lady. Um, Woolly Witchcraft podcast is maybe just maybe um, designing a shawl that I have to test knit. Um, so that's always in the back of my head too. So that's an awful, awful, awful ramble <laughs> today. Um, I just want to recommend a couple of, oh, not a couple, three podcasts that I have been watching that I have really enjoyed. And the first one, they're one... Two are very new and one has been going a wee while. The first one is Knitting in Labradors and that's Karen. And she's up in the northeast of Scotland. And um, she's a mum, young mum and a young with a young baby, 12 weeks I think. And um, she is at home on maternity leave and has started a podcast. And um, it's I really enjoy it, very chatty. If you like my podcast, it'd be very, very chatty. Um, very, um, talks a lot about Scotland. Um, obviously, having lived up in Peterhead in the northeast, it's um I just love it and this last one she's only two podcasts out this last one she explains some of the northeastern 
uh, words and the Doric words and I knew exactly what she was talking about and um, Druckert and things like that and if you want to know what that means go and watch her podcast and I really enjoyed it so that's um, Knitting and Labradors because she's got a Labrador um, then um, the second one only put her first podcast out yesterday but she has lots of tutorials I'm rocking in my rocking chair I apologize um, she has lots of tutorials on YouTube and that is lovely Claire from Cookston Crafts she's also an amazing yarn dyer and when I lived in Peterhead she lived in the nearest town to me about 18 miles away Ellen and I got the great privilege of one of my birthdays I spent a morning in her workshop with her and drank tea and talked about yarn and um, just lovely person and beautiful yarn so check out Cookston Crafts podcast and her website to see her yarn um, and she's up in the northeast of Scotland as well. And then another person that I have just come across maybe the last few podcasts is a lovely guy called Sam. He's Italian, but he lives in the south of Ireland. And his podcast is called An Irish Knitting Podcast. <laughs> Bless him. I think he did try and change it to more of an Italian name, but YouTube didn't like it. Um, he is an amazing artist. Um, I, he's got an Etsy shop now it's a wee bit beyond my but my price budget but um, gorgeous go and have a check if you like any sort of farm life or healing cows or anything like that go and have a look he's a designer he's got beautiful socks cowls he's got so on Ravelry and he's also I think he said this in this last podcast that he's a lawyer in his day job so he's a talented young man um, and really nice podcast um, it always amazes me anybody doing a podcast that's not in their own language um, but yeah check him out an Irish knitting podcast um, so knitting and Labradors Cookston Crafts podcast and an Irish knitting podcast that's my three recommendations for this this week <sighs> right because I've stopped and started this video I don't know how many minutes it is so it could be a feature length edition but as always I'm done <laughs> <laughs> the nitty stuff's done um as always i like to share a wee bit about um the bible or from scripture about because my heart um from my heart and um i am a christian and um i don't want to push it in your face so if you do not want to stay for this bit i am not offended i understand it's not for everybody um i understand that you're here for the nitty goodness and i hope there's been enough of that at this time if you've anything you want to ask anything you want to talk about anything go to my instagram messages or to email and i will always answer and if you're leaving me now you have a fantastic um few weeks i'll see you again soon and you look after yourself bye for those of you who are staying on i'll just be five minutes just want to share a wee bit of something that's on my heart today and today i just want to say what do you never thought we'd ever have to say these things but the most said thing in our house this the minute is have you got your mask and how many people have to do this in their households, either with their children, their husband, before you go into a shop, whatever, have you got your mask? And not just in the UK, worldwide. And my kids are so used to wearing their mask, bless them, they have to wear them for eight hours a day at school, that they ask me now, mummy, have you got your mask? So there's been a complete role reversal. And I'm sure very few of us would ever choose to wear one voluntarily. But because it's either the law in your country or you worry that about vulnerable people and you're keeping them safe, you wear the mask. But, you know, I know that a lot of people for years before this pandemic was ever mentioned have worn an invisible mask. And I was thinking how many of us have worn this mask for years, not a COVID mask, but this invisible mask. And when people ask us how we are or um, when we're somewhere that we really don't want people to see the true us, we put up this mask. An invisible mask designed to fool folk into assuming that we are okay and in control. A mask that hides your anger, frustration, worry, guilt, maybe shame, feelings of worthlessness, depression or emptiness. You know, we might be able to fool people around us, but we can't fool God. He knows everything about us. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 20, it says, Even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings and he knows everything. Now, I don't say that in a um, way of God's watching you, not in a <laughs> creepy voice. I don't mean it that he's, you know, lurking round corners. 
but rather that he can see you and knows who you really are. He knows what you're trying to hide. And in Psalm 69 verse 5, it says, Oh God, you know how foolish I am. My sins cannot be hidden from you. And if you want to read, it's too long to read now, but if you want to read Psalm 139, it tells us how God knows us better than we even know ourselves. He knows our hurts. He knows our confusion, our guilt, and as I said, our shame, but loves us regardless. Unconditionally, he loves us. Trying to pretend that we're okay and in control, look, it can only last for a while. Something has to give eventually. We're only human. And no matter who the strongest person is, if you're putting up this mask continuously, someday it has to drop. It is only when we take off our mask and be honest with, when, with God that things can truly change. I don't mean that suddenly, poof, your life will get better, everything will be fine, no worries, um, oh, just it'll be absolutely fantastic. Don't get me wrong, I believe in a God of miracles. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I have a great faith, but once you drop that mask and trust God, healing and forgiveness can finally begin. Be honest with yourself. Are you wearing a mask? Is it time you ask for help? Maybe you need medical help. Maybe you need family help. Maybe you need to just say, I am not coping. But maybe it's time to finally take that mask off and finally, once and for all, ask God to forgive you for the things you're so desperately trying to hide. If you're wearing a mask as you worry about what others will think of you. And if they saw the true you, they wouldn't like you. Maybe that's not the group of people you want to be with or then you can take that to God too. You can take it to God. You know, Romans 8 verse 31 says, what shall we say about such wonderful things as this? Now, listen, if God is for us, who can ever be against us? God is for us. So those people, those trolls on the Internet, those people who leave nasty comments, those people who are maybe in your work are just hard to get on with. If God is for us, who can be against us? You know, in this Instagram ready world we live in, we can be judged and then treated in a certain way just from the way we look, the way we act, the way we come across. Um, but in 1 Samuel 16 verse 7 it says, For the Lord does not look on the things man looks at. A man looks at the outside of a person, but the Lord looks at your heart. And today I just want to leave one question with you. How is your heart today? Is your heart ready to have the Lord come in, take over your life, forgive your sins, move you on in a whole new direction? Or are you happy to sit there with your mask on and your heart troubled? If I can help you move to that next step, if I can help you come to know God better, I can't do anything. I can't make you make your heart change. I can't do anything. All I can do is help you understand maybe um, the, how to make the next step. Um, that's all I wanted to share with you today. I hope if you are someone who has a mask up um, and you need help, you'll reach out. I hope so if you have um, that mask up um, and it's, it's um, dictating your life, I hope again you'll reach out for help. You'll admit that you need help. And I am here if I can help over email. If you just need a listening ear, feel free to get in touch. Well, that's me. That's whew, a mega, a mega um, episode today. Hopefully editing will cut it down a bit. <laughs> um if i hope that you are safe and well i hope that you've enjoyed the little bit of nitty chat and i hope that um until i see you again you'll stay safe and keep on knitting god bless bye